Hey everyone, it's Fox from Modelmaking.Guru here, back with part 6 of our build of the Mega Size RX-78 II Gundam. Right, where are we up to? Well, I spent a little time uh, over the weekend starting some of the painting. Uh, as you can see, I have now painted most of the inner frame parts. Give you a close-up view so you can see. Shiny, shiny. Now what I did this time was, I tried something new this time. Uh, I've always been told that spraying metallic colours over a glossy black undercoat makes the metallics more shiny and more metallic. Um, you can see it's banging off the light there, so it's reflecting quite nicely. Um, it, that's what I did. It did work. It does make this is gunmetal to me a gunmetal. Uh, it does make it a bit more shiny and reflective. However, it also makes it a little darker, which kind of is really obvious because you're painting it with a dark colour paint underneath if you remember, if you watch my um freedom gundam you know i've got a nice silvery metallic color this is more towards what you think gunmetal will look like now i quite like it it works all right for me so i'm going to carry on using that technique but i think for a, i know now the difference i can get between using uh, a gloss black undercoat or just the primer the primer makes it a lighter color maybe not quite as metallic and bright but lighter uh, and we will be doing some chrome silver and other things on here anyway. Um, I did debate whether to do a smoke wash on this, like an airbrush smoke, to me a smoke wash. Like I did on the Freedom, but I'm not going to bother because it's dark enough already. Um, so, yeah. So what I'm going to show you in this episode, if not more, uh, I mean, if I can show you more, if I don't run out of time. Uh, I'm going to take this piece, which is basically primed, and that's it, using to my uh, to me as a uh, grey primer because I ran out of white. Uh, to look like this. So I'll get this out of the way. We can get rid of the shiny shiny. Now what are we going to use? Well we're going to use something really simple. We're going to do the flat, the uh, gloss black coat first. Gloss black coat, not gloss black blah 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 blah. Yeah I've already lost it and I've only like you know two minutes in. So we're going to be using Tamir's heavily oversaturated with the white uh, gloss black which is just X1. Tamiya paints the X is usually a gloss colour, XF is a flat colour. Uh, we are going to use some thinner. For this I'm just using um, Ultimate Airbrush Thinner from Ultimate Modelling Products. Uh, web address here. Uh, really good. It works in pretty much any acrylic paint and it has a when you get it, it does have a, a list, and there's a list on their website of the different ratios for thinning. We're going to use the standard 50-50 for Tamiya paints. Uh, and then, once that's done and that has dried, we are going to use my favourite Tamiya X10 highly overlit uh, gunmetal, which I love. Uh, and gunmetal seems to be so variable, I can never quite get the same colour twice. So, hey, what are you going to do? So, let's get cracking. What we need first of all is our Airbrushen Gefahrten. If I can get the lid off. There you go. Uh, this is a Neo Free Water. Uh, it's about 45 quid. You can get it from anywhere. I got mine from emodels. Uh, website. You can see the address here. Yes, I'm spamming everybody today. Everybody gets a mention. Uh, now, I've been led to believe this isn't actually in a water airbrush. It's just an airbrush that's sold by water as Neo 40 Watt. I don't know. I don't care. It's a nice basic airbrush. It's a good beginner's brush. Um, you have a 0.35, I think, millimeter nozzle and needle. You have your dual action, so you can push down for a pull back for paint. Um, you have your nice so many milliliter cup that I can't remember, but it's really cool. That comes off. Uh, the only thing it doesn't have is a paint, what I call a throttle on the back. You usually get an adjustment, a knurled adjustment nut on the back, and it controls how far back you can pull the trigger. It's not the end of the world. Um, I do find that useful on airbrushes because I can say, right, I only want to go as heavy as however much. So if I want to go a full blast of paint, I pull the trigger back all the way for full paint. If I want to do a little bit of paint and no more, I twist the knob so I can lock the trigger how far back it goes, and I'm not going to overpaint something. If I was doing lots of light misty coats, this, as far as I can tell, doesn't have it. So, but it's not the end of the world. You just have to learn to really control where you put your finger on. So you go a bit more carefully. Uh, I've also got a moisture trap uh, on here. You remember the last time I got a moisture trap, it kind of exploded and all the rubber seals inside came out. This one's been working fine now. Um, I'll try and put a link up here from where I got it from. It's about seven quid, uh, and it just fits on the end of your compressor hose. Uh, and as always, I'm using my trusty little compressor. Which is made of cheapness uh, and hasn't yet died. 
And now I've got the moisture trap. I don't get water in my spray. The reason you get this is with small, cheaper compressors or any compressor that gets warm or hot, you're compressing air. It warms up, it cools down, it warms up. You're going to get moisture. And if you get water coming through in the air supply, you get splots of water on your model. It doesn't really make a mess, but it can just be a pain in the bum because you have to sit there and dry the water off. And it can affect your paint finish. So if you've not got a moisture trap on your compressor like me, you've got a little crappy cheap one, just get yourself an inline moisture trap like this. You can get moisture traps that go on the compressor, but there's so many different types and you have to get the right one, otherwise your house will explode. Um, that I just thought, you know what, so I'll just get one that goes on the airbrush and therefore happy days. Happy days. So yeah, get an inline uh, moisture trap. Absolutely invaluable. Basically when air's coming through, you press this button and the moisture comes out. So it stops water getting in your paint. So we are going to... Uh, fight with this airbrush because it wants to spin round. I'm going to uh, do our gloss black first. Um, now you can, I'm going to mix this in the cup. Um, you'll see when I do the gun metal, I've actually pre-mixed some gun metal, um, especially. What you tend to find is whenever you mix paint, if you can, mix the paint outside the brush. So if you've got a specific colour you want or a specific uh, mix ratio between thinners and paints, do it in a little pot, keep it in a little bottle like these. I got these from Hobbycraft for like £2 for 10 um, and have it re mixed and ready, especially if you're doing a specific mix of colours. Because if you run out in the cup, you have to refill and remix, you'll never get the same mix. Um, also, what you need to make sure and try and minimise is that you want the paint to mix with the thinner properly, otherwise you get loads of thinner coming out first and it just goes wrong. Because I'm only doing a small bit here, I'm not really too fussed, so I'm just going to mix it straight into the, into the, the paint cup. Uh, and uh, that's where we're going to go. So I don't need a lot, but I'm going to get some uh, thinner. Again, this is just uh, acrylic paint thinner. Um, with acrylic paints, don't use white spirit, don't use turps, that's for other kinds of paints. Just make sure, if you're going to use a thinner, stick to model brand thinners like Tamiya, um, Vallejo, uh, or, you know, this Ultimate Modeling Products, which works with anything, any acrylics. So we're going to put a few drops of the thinner in. I'm going to go 50-50 mix. I'm going to do half the cup with thinner. Do 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 and then this is where the super accurate science comes in. I'm just going to mix my paint first. <laughs> I'm giving it a vigorous shake. Oh, that's hard work. I think I popped my elbow out. Now this is where the science comes in. I'm just going to pour it straight in because I am super scientific. going to eyeball it. Yeah, that seems about right. See, I'm dead scientific, me. I've got a scruffy old brush here. I'm going to mix the paint in here first. Just I'm going to go right down into the hole where the needle is and munge it about. Always put the thinner in first. If you put the paint in first, it'll go down into where the needle is and block it up and then you'll get the thinner on top. It'll mix with the stuff in the cup, but it won't mix with the paint around the needle and you get a big splodge of paint. It won't mix properly. Right, so we've mixed the paint in. Uh, get rid of this. This is, uh, this is the thing you can spray out when you're cleaning your brushes. Get one of these. They're not expensive. Saves you getting paint fumes everywhere. So, gloves, because this will get messy. Uh, I'm basically going to paint this gloss black first, so I'm going to do a light mist coat just to cover it, uh, and then dry it with some air, and then go over with another light coat, just until it's got enough paint on it. So, I'm going to get the extraction fan on. I'm not, spray I'm not spraying in my spray booth, because I'm filming it, but I'm going to put my spray booth fan on anyway, just to get any vapours out of my window. And let's hit the compressor. So like I said, the way an airbrush works, you push down for air, you pull back for, I'm going to put the lid on, you pull back for paint. And the trick is always push down for air first, a little box here, always push down for air first, so no paint coming out, and then pull back for paint. Slowly, as you pull back more, you'll get more paint coming out. Only pulling it back a little bit. That's how an airbrush works. Always do air first in case there's some paint on the needle so that it doesn't go bleh and put paint everywhere. So we're just going to do a light coat first, like this. I'm going to mist it on, just so the paint that goes on top can grip. And then we're going to go over with some proper paint, some full paint. Let's do this. Let's do this. Right, so pull down for air, pull back for paint. Oh, let me just get a better grip of that. Pull back, down for air, back for paint. Just doing a light mist coat. You see, I'm not waving the brush around like I've just picked up a spider. I'm just gently moving it left and right, not too fast. And I'm about that far from the piece. 
The further away you go from the piece, the wider the fan of pain. The closer you go, the smaller the area of pain. If you're doing fine details, you'd go in close with the brush and have not too much paint coming out. If you were just trying to cover a big area, you'd pull back and get more coming through. So I'm just going to get into all the nooks and crannies. It's a lot easier to move the piece rather than move your wrist into unnatural positions. Remember, you're not a gumpler. Your wrists don't go that way. This is just a light mist coat just to get some paint on the surface. Now remember this is primer on here and I can't stress enough, and I hope you can hear all this, I can't stress enough the importance of putting primer on your model parts before you paint. But I'll try and explain that when I've not got all the compressors and fans and things going on so you can hear me. I'm going to go under here. Right, so that's a nice mist coat. I'm going to now just push down for air and not have paint. So just air, and I'm going to dry it a little bit. I'm just blowing air on it, just to help that paint flash off a little bit faster. So that when the next coat goes on, it's dry and it's got something to grip onto. Don't worry if you've missed a bit, it's not important right now. You'll often find if you do a mist coat first and then build it up in slow layers, rather than put all the paint on at once, you'll get a smoother, finer finish, hopefully. Right, so now next coat, we're going to go air first and pull back for paint and we're going to go a little bit heavier with the trigger this time, pull back a bit further, spend a bit longer in each area, just getting some more paint on. And I'm moving the piece rather than moving the airbrush. Another good reason not to wave the airbrush around like you picked up a spider is because paint will go everywhere if you've not got the lid on the cup. And I have done that so many times you wouldn't believe. I've spilt paint so many times you should start calling me Tony Fairclough. Wah, wah. Sorry dude. Couldn't resist. Oops. Just get it into every little crook and nanny. I should have really designed this clip better, it's a bit loose and wobbly. Don't worry too much that this gloss black isn't looking particularly glossy. Just make sure you've got everywhere covered. I've taped off the end of this little nub here just because I know that's the bit that goes into a poly cap. <clears throat> so it's not going to be seen. Right, so that's the coat. I'm going to go back to just air, just to dry that a little bit. There are some bits I've missed, but I'm not worried just yet. Okay, now third coat, well, second full coat, third coat. Let's just do it. Air first, always, and then on with the paint. Going a little bit more heavier again this time. A bit more paint each time. I can pull back a bit further to get bigger coverage and do it faster. It's hard to see where the paint's going because it's already painted. But you'll see the text. You'll see the wetness where the new paint is. Again, I'm not pulling back all the way on the trigger, you don't need to. It's very rare you'll ever have to do that. You just build in the paint up slowly. You take your time, you shouldn't get any blobs of paint or runs because you're not putting that much on. But watch the paint as it goes on. If you suddenly see it start to ripple or get little ripple marks, 
you're going too much too fast. Pull back, push back on the trigger, less paint, and take your time. Move away from that area and just go and do a different bit. And now one last blast of air. I'm going to do one more quick coat and this is going to be pulling back quite away on the trigger now but fast just to get some last coverage. So, ready? But I'll pull further back so I get wider coverage. Going a bit faster. You probably don't need to do this bit but I kind of do. I'm not the best at gloss colours, I never use them so... You know my models, I don't do shiny models. So I have no reason to usually paint gloss colours. And that, my friends, is done. So let me when you finish spraying, you want to release any air from the airbrush. Also drag a t-shirt around if you can. Release any air from the airbrush, so just push down for air. And there you're done. The reason you do that is to get any air that's left in the compressor tube out so that when you first turn it on again it doesn't go bleh with the air and put paint everywhere. <sighs> right, so that's now been painted gloss black. Uh, I will leave this to dry for maybe half an hour now. Acrylics are good like that. We've got a nice smooth finish uh, on the gloss black. It's not very glossy and this is what I say I don't often do gloss paints and I don't like using gloss paints and acrylic gloss paints aren't the most glossiest of paints in the world so uh, usually it's clear coat layers afterwards of gloss that give you that but that'll do that's the back under black undercoat so I'm gonna leave that to dry for maybe an hour half an hour 45 minutes just to make sure but what I do need to do whilst that's drying <clears throat> I did the other actually I can't do it now it's not black is it what we'll do next when we've done that we'll get the gunmetal on there and on the hinge pieces you may be wondering how you paint these hinge pieces when they're all assembled quite easy you basically you take the piece put it into one position paint it when that's fully dry you turn the hinge around the other way and I'm gonna paint this bit that didn't get any paint last time and I've got the two knees and two elbow joints to do that so I'm gonna leave this to dry uh, I'll show you quickly how I clean my airbrush so I'm gonna stop the recording now so I can get set up and I'll show you that so, how do I clean my airbrush? Well, there's two ways to do it. I won't do the proper, proper blah, 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 blah. I won't do the words. I won't do a full strip down clean here now. I'll do a proper how to do your airbrush thing at some other time. Uh, but if I'm gonna change colors, if you're gonna change color from say red to blue or green to black or whatever you're doing, you do a quick clean just to get any paint out so you can swap to a new color. So I'll show you that method. So if I was now gonna paint something else, uh, a different color, this is what I would do. Uh, take your airbrush still connected to the compressor but the compressor's not on now you could there's paint left in here you could put this back in the paint tub and save it but i've thinned it down so it's i don't want to do that so i've just got a scruffy old glass i'm just going to pour that in and get rid of that okay right first thing you want to do and there's a million different ways of doing this this is just the way i do it i've got a whole load of blue tissue paper uh which you know makes the screen go green brilliant so i'm going to get some of that off First thing you want to do is make it into a little, little point, get it into your paint cup, push it down and just scrub it around. What you don't want to do at the minute is press the trigger. I'm still connected to air because I don't have a quick release thing on my air, on my compressor so I'm desperately trying not to push the trigger. So get that in there. Get all the paint, loads of paints, that's looking a bit cleaner now, you can see. Still paint in there. So what we need to do is get ourselves, you can either use airbrush cleaner or thinner. I'm going to use thinner because I've got it here. Uh, get some thinner in there. I'm going to get the scruffy brush that I mixed the paint with before. And I'm just going to work it around the cup with this thinner. Again, don't use a good brush, just use an old brush for scruff. I have a brush in each airbrush. In each airbrush I've got in the box, there's a scruffy brush, and that's the brush for that airbrush, and it's used for doing this and for mixing paints. 
So I'm pushing it down to where the needle is gently. I'm twizzling it around. I'm just getting all the paint off the inside of the cup. So I'll pour that away. Now I know this is kind of up in the air at the minute, so let me just change my focus a little bit. Maybe this might help. So get back with your tissue. I'm going to get some more tissue. Uh, do, 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 do. You can use kitchen roll. Uh, this is just automotive, a big massive roll of automotive blue tissue. But you can use kitchen roll. Don't use toilet roll because that's a fluffy and you'll get loads of bits coming off into your airbrush. Let's get this in there. Dooby dooby doo. So you can see not as much coming out this time, but there's still some. Now there'll still be loads of paint in there. And notice I've not blown anything through yet. So I'm going to put thinner in there again. Go back with the brush and do exactly the same. Now remember, this isn't a how to clean your airbrush at the end of the day. This is how to clean your airbrush so you can paint a different colour straight away. What you can do, if you want to, if you carefully pull the needle back without pushing it down, you can get the brush in and clean the more forward point of the needle. Because we paint on the needle, but you can't get the brush down there. So don't push it down, just pull it back and you'll get a bit more going through. So that's that done. Tip that away. And then again, go back in with more tissue. And get more tissue going on. And again, I've not pushed any air through it yet. I've not fed anything through the airbrush. So now I've cleaned out the cup. Now what I like to do at this point is take the cup off. If it's a removable cup, take it off. You've still got paint in here. So what I tend to do is get myself a little cotton bud or Q-tip or cotton swab as some people call it. I'm learning new names for things all the time. Bit of thinner in your little paint reservoir there. Uh, and get the cotton bud in. Give it a good scrunch around. Just to get the paint out of the thread. I might need a bit more because it's disappeared. Give it a good scrub. Gently again. Just to get paint out of the thread. Get it in there, twizzle it round. Get as much out as you can. Well, there probably are quicker ways of doing this, but this is just the way I like to do it. Get your tissue again. Make a little point. And just get that in there and twirl it round. Again, stay away from your trigger. And you'll get most of that paint. Now there will still be some little bits of paint in there. But that's not a problem. So I've done that two or three times. You can see there's the paint on the cup and so on, but I'm not bothered about that just yet. So what I'm going to do now is actually I'll just get that paint off the cup. Oh, it's on the outside. That's fine. So the paint cup should be reasonably clean. Give it a scrub around the thread. Put the paint cup back on. If you can find an airbrush where anything screws on easily first time, I will give you five pence. Five whole pence. Right, I'm going to get some thinner in the cup. I'm going to hit the compressor. And now I'm going to blast it through. I'm going to push down all the way and pull back all the way. Until that cup's empty. All I'm doing is blasting the thinner through. So anything at the tip or the needle should get a, a dose of thinner and should help get rid of some of that paint. When it makes its little sucky noise, you know it's got no paint left. So clear the air out of the tube. And we are now done. Now there's still paint around here, which shouldn't be a problem, but if you want to do a test spray, you can do. Uh, I'm going to do a test spray. Uh, Ultimate airbrush cleaner is blue, and the reason it's blue is so when you clean your airbrush, you can see if it's actually clean because it's not paint coloured. So I'm going to put some airbrush cleaner in there. And we're going to try. See what happens. Okay, see it's still grey. But not for long. Because that might just be moisture. Okay, so you get a little bit of greyness there. So there's still some paint in there. So what I could do 
is do a little bit of back flushing now and just a bit of tissue over that. Don't press the needle, just hold it down gently over the top, pull back and it'll bubble. That should hopefully dislodge anything that's in the needle area. A bit more thinner. Give it one more blast into the little thingy. Just to blow it through. Now if we paint with nothing in the cup, you see there's nothing coming through now. Let's go through with this. And that should just be a dark patch because it's wet and because the cleaner fluid is slightly coloured. Spray on here. It's now clear. So there may still be paint in there. Which is why you do a full strip down at the end of every day. Uh, but that would now be clean enough to go ahead and put more colour in, a different colour in and start painting with that. So that's a quick clean. Uh, I won't show you the full strip down, I'll do that in a separate video and I'll do a proper thing like this. But that's just a quick glimpse of um, how to clean it after after using a colour before you change colour. So, right, I'll uh, wait for that black part to dry and when we come back we will do the gun metal. So, you know what I'm going to say. Back in a moment. Okie dokie, right, we have left this to dry for about half an hour now, 45 minutes. Time to go in it with Das Gunmetal Gefahrten. Uh, as I said before, I am using Tamiya X10 Gunmetal. Uh, now what I've done is I've already pre-mixed uh, some gunmetal. And it's very roughly about 60-65, maybe 70% thinner to the rest of it gunmetal. The reason I tend to thin metallics especially more than other paints is because, like I said before, metallic paints, the Tamiya paints, have metal flakes in them. Uh, or flakes of the colour, like gold or silver or what have you. Um, and if you just put them straight through your airbrush, even something like this Iwata Neo with its 0.35mm nozzle, you're probably going to just gunk up and not a lot will come out. It'll come out patchy or splattery. It's, it's a thicker than the normal colour because it's got the metallic flakes. And they'll build up around the needle and it'll just get messy. Um, so what I like to do is thin them a bit more. You can actually go crazy thin with things like gun metal. When I did the Freedom Gundam I think I had a sort of 80-20 ratio almost. Um, and it can affect the colour. The thinner it goes sometimes the lighter the, the colour. So there you go. So I'm just going to put some of this. So it's pre-mixed. I've given it a bit of a shake to get the thinner and paint together. So I'm going to put some in there. I don't need a lot. Oh, I do need a lot actually because I'll probably go through loads. Uh, right so that's in the cup. I'm going to give it a little bit of a sturulation. I also need a piece of foam because I've got the other parts to do. I'm going to give it a little quick stirry stirry. That's the wrong end of the brush, you moron. Hello! Give it a quick stirry stirry just to just to mix it up a bit more. I say I did give it a shake before I put it in, but you want to make sure all the paint's mixed in nicely. There's no separation between the thinner and the paint because you don't want a big blob of paint to come out first before any thinner comes out or to be separate or anything like that. So, how are we going to do this? Well, we're going to use exactly the same technique as before. We're going to do a light mist coat first. Then we'll go back in with a slightly heavier coat. Maybe another one after that. Dry between each one with just air. Uh, and then at the end, I might just give it a quick blast from further away with a bit more paint. Uh, now, when you paint gun metal, it will look speckly, but don't worry too much. So we just turn everything on. Okay, make sure we've got paint coming through. Yep. So, again, like before, start with a light mist coat. So not very far back, air first, and not very far back on the trigger.
Right, so I'll go and clean my airbrush out. Uh, and when we come back, uh, we still got more to do on those. When we come back, I'll quickly discuss about primaries because I said I would. And I'll show you what they look like. Uh, and then that will probably do it for this episode. But when we come back after that, we'll show you what the next thing we're going to do on those. The reason I'm painting these now is because I can keep these as separate sub-assemblies. Um, so get all these painted up because these are going to be shiny. The rest of the kit is going to be matte, like I said, with the Freedom Gundam. So I need to keep these bits separate from when the weathering and varnishing is going on because I don't want to matte varnish them. Uh, but that's the beauty of this kit. It's so modular. It's like bottom of the leg, knee, top of the leg. It's just great. Bottom of the arm, elbow, top of the... You can just keep it all separate sub-assemblies. So uh, let me go and clean the airbrush. And when we come back, I'll have a quick uh, talk about primer. So back in a moment. Okie dokie, we are back. And as you can see, uh, the paint is all dried now and it's looking rather top notch. A little darker than I'd hoped for, but I can live with it. Uh, not every model is going to be the same. Uh, I, like I said in the video earlier, I did it exactly the same as the gloss black. So I applied uh, one very light mist coat, dried that with some air, then did I think three slightly more fuller paint coats, but still not too heavy, a bit light each with a blast of air between just to dry them a little bit, flash them off uh, and then when that was last done I gave it one quick coat with a bit more paint coming through from a distance, more of a slapdash coat like I did with the black uh, just to settle everything down uh, and when you're painting it, when I was painting it, it looked really full of, you could see all the little paint flecks that's now smoothed out quite nicely, it's still a little bit grainy and it's more grainy than the Freedom Gundam came out it's a little darker uh, but that's probably down to my particular mixture. This one was more like a 60, 70, 30 or 40. Uh, the one on the Freedom Gun, I think, was more like 75, 80% thinner. So I'm just experimenting as I go along. But it's looking pretty good. And that's all the bits done. I touched up, as you saw in the video, I touched up all the hinges in other parts where the first time I painted these off camera, uh, they didn't get any paint. So that's looking pretty good. So we've got other things to do with these yet. We've got to do some uh, dry brushing with chrome silver. They are going to have a gunk wash uh, and other bits and bobs. So that's the end of the story for this episode, I think. I think we've kind of filled our time. There was one thing I wanted to mention, and that was, like I said in the video earlier, uh, I wanted to talk about primers. Now, I've had so many questions about primers. What are they? Do I need to use them? Um, so here's the first question answered. Do I need to use primers? If you're painting a model, Always, 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 always use a primer. If you're painting a Gumpler model, twice as much, always use a primer. Primer, one thing primer is not, is paint. Primer is nothing like a paint. If you paint paint onto bare plastic, let it dry, especially in a Gumpler where there's a hinge or a moving part, uh, you can very easily scratch that paint off because the paint doesn't really bind to the plastic, it's just sitting on top. It doesn't take much to get that paint off. No matter how many other layers of paint and varnish you put on top, it's going to scratch and scrape a lot easier. Um, when I was doing my paint chipping weathering uh, on some of the models, you saw that I was, on the Freedom Gundam, I was scratching the paint off with the blade. That's because the paint was just on top of gloss varnish. It's the same principle. If you paint straight onto plastic, it's... It's just going to come off eventually. It's not going to grip properly. It may not, but it's a risk. And if you spend, you know, 100 hours making a model and suddenly you move a joint and all the paint comes off, you're going to be really sad. Primer is not paint. Primer, uh, basically what it does, it etches into the plastic. It, it bites into the plastic chemically and grips it like a leech. Uh, doing two things. One, it, it bonds itself to the plastic so it's not going to come off. And it also then gives a nice rough surface on a microscopic scale for the paint to adhere to and it can react with the paint so the paint can grip it. So it gives a much more grippy surface for the paint so the paint is much less likely to come off. With primers, some people will say to do this but I prefer not to. Don't go to Halfords and buy a tin of automotive primer. Two reasons. One, it's not necessarily designed for plastic unless it says it's designed for plastic. But two, even if it says it's designed for plastic, um, it may not necessarily be primer. The problems are if you use an automotive primer that's not designed for plastic, I can't guarantee you it's not going to melt the plastic or eat into your plastic properly and corrode it and break it. Um, also, many automotive primers are actually just paints. They're not primers. They won't really grip and etch into the plastic. So you take your life in your own hands if you use something from Halfords or an automotive primer. 
my personal advice, always prime your model, always use a modeling primer. Ideally, if you can, use the primer from the same manufacturer as your paint. Um, so if you're using Tamiya paints, use their Rattlecam primers. If you're using Vallejo paints, use their primers. You don't have to, and personally, I actually much prefer Tamiya Rattlecam primer. Um, I'll show you what it is. I've shown you before. It's their surface primer. Uh, I think it's a, it's probably, of all the primers you can get for airbrush and spray can, it's the best one. It goes on super smooth. It gives a really nice smooth coat. Uh, it's really fine, so you don't lose any crisp details. I've never had to think about applying it. I just spray it on, like you saw me do when I was doing the hairspray technique in the Freedom video. When I was doing the press pan release. It's that. Press pan release, spray it on, done, no thinking. Uh, I have tried some airbrush primers in the past, and they're just... For me, they're too involved. You have to get the mix right, you have to get the distance right, you have to leave them to cure for so long, you have to mess around, it's all farting about. I, I can't be bothered with that. I just want to get the primer on and get on with the rest of the build. Now, there is a disadvantage to rattle cam primers. Obviously, you can't go outside when it's throwing it down with rain, or when it's a 100 mile an hour wind, or it's the depth of winter and minus 10 billion degrees. So you, you have to spray them outside, because if you spray this indoors, you will kill every single living thing in your house unless they kill you first for doing it uh, and you will do yourself a lot of harm it's nasty stuff you don't want to be breathing it in um, and because it's a rattle can even if you have a spray booth like me you sp try spraying any rattle can in your spray booth you'll just have a big cloud of whatever you're spraying coming straight back out the spray booth into your face again you're going to be breathing it in it's bad for you it will stink the room out even if you've got windows open and extraction fan so do this stuff outside my personal uh, preference would be use rattle can primer and if you can, use Tamiya's because I think it's the best one. It's the toughest one I've used and it's not had any problems with it ever. Uh, I say there are ones from Vallejo and other manufacturers and they are alright. AK Interactive do one. Uh, there's loads of videos out there saying the pros and cons of different primers. Uh, this stuff, it goes on, it's dry within 10 to 15 minutes. You can put tape on this and it won't pull up um, anything on the tape. If you put paint on top of this and then mask off with tape and pull the paint off, Pull the tape off even, it's not going to pull the paint up. Once the paint's on top of this, it's not coming off without a fight. Uh, you can scrape it off with a knife like you've seen me do before. Uh, and the beauty of that stuff is, if you want to do paint chipping, if you say use a white primer or this light grey primer, paint it on, then paint your colour over the top, you can scrape the colour away and the primer will remain intact and the primer can be your chipping coat, the colour of your paint chips. So yes, without risk of too much more waffling, always use a primer. With Gumpla kits, you must always use a primer twice as much because some of the parts in Gumpler kits, as you know from reading the instructions, are polystyrene, some ABS. Uh, and a lot of the products you will use to paint these things, the thinners in your paints, some of the washes, will eat that, EB, uh, eat that ABS plastic away and your parts will crumble and fall apart. So if you're painting a Gumpler, always prime it. And if you've got a part that's got an interior you're never going to see, prime that bit anyway, just to be safe. Because if I... If I did a smoke wash on, a, this is why I don't do smoke washes on Gumpler, I use oil paints. If I did a smoke wash on a Gumpler without putting a primer down, those parts would just crumble. They'd just fall apart, the ABS parts, and some of the polystyrene, but anything with hot thinners in it is going to destroy your plastic. So always use a primer, for, that gives you the best adhesion for the paint, it protects any delicate plastics like ABS, uh, and it will give you the best looking results. Um, your paint will give you a lot a much more smoother finish. I'm kind of having trouble talking now. It will give you a much better finish. So to answer a million questions, yes, always use primer. There's no reason to never use a primer. If you don't use a primer, don't be surprised if paint does come off, if it doesn't sit well, if it peels in certain places, especially moving parts and hinges. Um, or if when you're applying, say, washes, the paint underneath the wash just peels away because there's no primer for it to grip onto to protect itself from the wash. So, yeah. Always use a primer, and that'll do every model kit you ever make. So, that's that over. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the little airbrush tutorial. It's only a real quickie one. It's nothing major. It's just a quick look to see. Um, I'm hoping this new lighting technique I've got kind of works out. I'm just trying something, which may make the house burn down, but it might not. It might just be a terrible idea. Um, but, yes, um, stay tuned for the next one. Uh, I'm not sure how, what exactly we're going to do. We'll probably carry on with these metallic inner parts, because I'm doing all these first. We'll get some chrome silver going on there. Uh, we'll get some gunk washing going on, some gloss varnishings and things like that. So, as always, thank you very much for washing. Washing? I really am not talking sense now doing this bit. Crikey, Riley. Thank you very much for watching. 
Um, as always, subscribe to the YouTube channel. You're on it. You may as well subscribe to it. Visit me on Facebook. Visit me on Twitter. The addresses are at the end, so stick around for the end of the titles. Uh, and, oh, bear in mind as well, I've, I forgot to say this uh, the other day, but I have started uploading videos of my music that I've written and composed, so it's completely original to me. Uh, and I've decided to make it completely royalty-free uh, under a Creative Commons license. I've only uploaded about four or five so far. What it basically means is, go and watch the video, you can download the video or you can use you can record the audio as you're playing it however you want to do it um, you are more than welcome to use that music in whatever way you see fit in your videos you can remix it you can put dubs on it whatever you want to do the only stipulation is wherever you use it you have to give me a credit and the video will have the wording for the credit uh, under a creative commons license if you remix it into something else uh, you must also then use the same Creative Commons license. You can't remix my work and then put up a video and say it's copyrighted, it's not. So if you use my music, uh, you're more than welcome to. It won't cost you a penny. I'm never going to charge anybody for it. I want people to use my music because it's free and music in videos is great. Uh, but if you remix it or anything like that, you must then use the same Creative Commons license. Uh, check out the Creative Commons website for more information. But basically, I'm just saying, go and download those music pieces. They're absolutely copyright free, they're absolutely creative commons, they're royalty free, don't cost you a penny, and use it wherever you wish, however you wish, just make sure to give me credit. Um, so, end of waffle. I always do this waffling at the end, don't I? I kind of waffle on like a spoon. Um, catch up with us next time, we'll do some more interesting things. Uh, and stay tuned for more uh, build diary videos for the Destiny Gundam. Uh, I'm still waiting for some bits to turn up for that, some supplies, so as soon as they do I can get cracking with that one. But anyway, thank you for watching. Take care of yourselves, uh, and we will see you the next time. So, as always... Oh, hang on. I don't, I've forgotten. Where is he? Where is he? Hang on. He's not been in this one yet. Adios, amoebas. Yeah. No, don't do that. Bye.